Today we are going to open the MakerBot digitizer. Um, MakerBot's brand new um, gadget de or device. Um, basically it's a scanner that um, scans anything, any object. You put on this little plate and it turns it into a file that can be put into something like this, which is the MakerBot Replicator 3D printer. And basically, I can put something like this um, on the platform and it'll scan it all the way around and it can recreate something. The beauty about that is that now you don't have to be a graphic designer or some sort of you know, CAD designer or computer genius to uh, print something. Now you can just be somebody that's curious and you can find some sort of object around the house uh, and you know, make a little replica. Obviously, it's not going to be the full thing, but um, you know, it can be a really great replica, especially for inventors, artists, and uh, people that are hackers that want to tweak stuff. Anyway, just opened it, and what we see here, um, uh, the packaging seems a little sloppy, seems like it was done by a startup, and uh, a startup that doesn't focus too much on Apple-like principles, or Steve Jobs principles, where everything has to be perfect, but it doesn't matter, who cares, um, because, you know, uh, this company is doing great things, and everything is um, amazing that they do, so I'm sure this will be nothing short okay so you get something that says congratulations on purchasing the MakerBot digitizer 3 desktop 3d scanner let's get started and there's the name open the box um, and then we're gonna open accessory box lift out MakerBot digitizer uh, we'll ignore all that right now um, remove packaging attach rubber feet power on Anytime you want to set up anything, uh, just a rule of thumb, you always want to read through the entire instructions. You don't have to do it thoroughly, but you kind of want to uh, glance over them just so you know what the next step may be. Um, so you don't rush into things and, and kind of skip a step. But usually a lot of this stuff is always very user friendly and focuses on consumer um, expectations and and ease of use. So. Anyway, we're going to take this apart. Um, again, there's a box in here. Let's see what this box has. Again, I've never done this. Uh, this is my first time getting the Maker Bot. I'm pretty sure I was one of the first ones that purchased it, so I'm pretty sure that nobody else on the internet has seen one of these yet, or maybe a select few um, lucky ones, such as myself. Okay, after I get this box to balance, I'm going to open it up you get a manual yep user manual we're gonna set that over the side uh, you get some sort of stand or something that looks like a chess board uh, we'll put that to the side as well I kind of wanted to see what everything has what this box has just in case if there's any missing parts or missing slots there's lots of missing things in them uh, but doesn't seem like there is and sorry, I'm really excited right now, so I'm trying to rush. And uh, if you're getting pissed off at me sitting there watching this video, you can go watch another video. But uh, you will definitely enjoy what I'm about to do here. Well, who knows, actually. Um, but I do. I enjoy what I'm doing here. So I enjoy technology, 3D printing, and everything else. <laughs> and there you go. You have a bunch of foam, and this is the unit right here that I'm feeling. So um, I'm going to have to turn off the video and gently take it out and then uh, resume the video after we have it set up. There you go, from that to that to what you're about to see next. Okay, just took out the MakerBot from its packaging. Didn't hook it up to the computer yet, but I wanted to give the audience just a quick overview of um, the device. Uh, when you pick it up out of the box, you're going to assume that it's very heavy it's actually very light I can pick it up with one hand as you can see that I'm doing right here uh, but you don't want to do that with one hand you want to obviously treat it with the utmost respect and delicacy uh, because um, I'm assuming that this machine is very fragile 
Um, this is where the, the object that you want to copy or scan is going to sit here. And there's a mirror right here. Um, I don't know much about the technical um, side of how everything works on this um, unit. Um, I wanted to originally make my own uh, a while back using lasers, but I'm, I'm thinking that using a laser, some sort of beam, this mirror will reflect uh, back onto this object and somehow um, send data back and convert it and send it into the MakerBot over there. Um, again, if you want to do a little 360 degree, I can kind of turn it around for you on the box. Um, looks kind of like a spaceship from the side, like a ancient Star Wars. Uh, you know, uh, Darth Vader uh, ship. But other than that, in the back here, um, I'm not sure if you can see, you got a power button, power switch right here, a green indicator light right here that you can barely see, but I'm sure that's just for power. Uh, and then obviously a power cord um, connector here. And then uh, a port that connects this unit to the computer. Again, um, very simple machine um, that's going to make a lot of complex things um, simple, uh, especially for us hackers, engineers, uh, students, and whatnot. Um, I'm going to hook it up and, then, and uh, we'll see it in action. Just set up and plugged in the MakerBot digitizer. I found out that that chessboard looking piece there. Um, is uh, a calibration tool and I know that because it says it right here on um, the second step um, of the instructions. So instructions are very simple uh, it looks like it's a lot to read um, but after you read through it it's just like why did you even why did you guys even write that um, but you know they gotta be dumb friendly so I appreciate them uh, making it so simple and so user friendly um, basically uh, it's telling me to run through this calibration process and we'll have it set up. So it said it uh, wanted a well lit um, location but uh, don't have the light source which is that um, directly into the camera which is right here. I found out that this right here slides and I don't know if you can see um, but there is a camera there and that's the lens that slides over. I think those right here um, which you're seeing, I think focus. I think those are just um, lights or sensors of some sort. Um, anyway, uh, you don't want to put this light source in direct line uh, with the camera, uh, otherwise it's not going to work. So uh, I've never done this, so I'm going to run through this for the first time with you guys. Um, it's telling me to slide the filter on, which we just did when you saw um, me do that with the camera. I'm going to go ahead and click continue here. And now it's saying calibrate your camera, orient the calibration tool with a with A pointing upwards. Now, so I think this little chess piece, chess board right here has an A on it. And it says position the calibration tool um, on the turntable as shown with a small tab at the lower corner inserted into the hole. Okay, so I'm gonna do this real quick and then I will get back to it. I placed it, this little piece right here with the A side up as shown in the instructions. And now the turntable here is spinning. After I press continue, you'll see something like this. Sorry about the reflection of the lights. Anyway, uh, you'll see this progress bar and uh, what's going on here. So I placed it like that on the table. And there you go, you'll see this calibration um, step occurring in front of your eyes. Um, and again, I've never opened this, so I'm seeing it for the first time too. So I apologize if it does mess up or um, if I didn't do something prop improper. Uh, uh, can't even talk. <laughs> if I did something uh, improperly, um, then I do apologize. Um, I'm really excited though. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have no problems calibrating this thing, and um, looks like it's done. Um, okay, 62%. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope this. Um, works out. Okay, now that it stopped doing the A side, it's telling me to do the B side. So what we're going to do is just simply flip it over. Sorry. And you see this tab right here? Um, there's one on each end, on the other side too. You just gonna flip it over to where B is going to be facing um, up. And then you take that little tab that you see right here and you insert it into the center. Uh, I 
in case you guys are confused with the instructions. In case any of you guys have this at home and you guys are trying to figure it out, you need a visual. Um, and you gotta fill it in, get it in the hole. Uh, yeah, I know, that's what she said. Uh, yeah, I've heard that a million times. But anyway, um, <laughs> you get it in the hole. Apparently, I'm having trouble. Uh, I'm not that big of an expert. Um, okay, let's see. Something wrong here. Um, okay, so we're gonna have to figure that out. Let's see what it says. Okay, well, it looks like I'm supposed to be doing it like that with B side up and to have that will tap in. Let's see here. Okay. Looks like we have a problem here, Houston. Um, now this contraption here seems to be really loose. So uh, I had to p literally push down on one side to get this little uh, tab or nipple, whatever you want to call it, um, to pop out. So you kind of have to play with it. Um, I, mean, when I mean play, you have to push it down here. Um, and get it in there. And still, I can't um, seem to fit anything in. Which, this is starting now to bother me. Uh, this is supposed to be user friendly and whatnot, and right now this is a big mess. So, anyway, okay, cool. Finally got it. Now this video has been recording for two minutes and thirty-five seconds. Well, at least this clip that I'm taking, which I will merge into one large clip later. Um, I've got B side up, uh, A side down, and now I am pressing continue on this program, and now it's gonna probably spin. It's slowly spinning. You see that camera right there? Um, there's a camera right there. Um, and it's shooting uh, onto this calibration tool to make sure that um, it's scanning the object correctly. And it uh, looks like on top there is uh, a C side. So I'm thinking that uh, we're not going to be done calibrating. Um, after this is done, after this is done spinning. So uh, next step, I'm pretty sure we're gonna calibrate the C side, so uh, let's do that and then hopefully we'll be done. Okay, finally I was able to get past um, the B stage in calibration. Uh, there's three stages, A, B, and C. Currently we're on C stage. Um, uh, so this is the calibration tool. Uh, what I was having a problem with was um, this little tab right here. Um, I guess this B side is removable, so you, the camera can see these um, the, these checker, uh, ch uh, checkered spots uh, on the inside. So this thing's removable. Because it's removable, it makes the tab on the other end uh, a little fickle, and whenever you try to get it into the center, it pushes up, and it just doesn't work out, and this thing's not stable. So I literally just tried troubleshooting this for 30 minutes. So thank you, uh, MakerBot, for wasting my time. Um, you guys are gonna have to get a better calibration tool because this one sucks, um, and I'm not too fond of it. Um, so no, no brownie points for you there, um, MakerBot um, and family. So now I'm at uh, C. It says remove the calibration tool uh, and uh, slide out the front panel. So we're gonna slide this panel out, like I said. By the way, I had to change the lighting too. I, I, I experimented with the lighting I had to see, you know, if, if, if I moved it from there to there, if it'll make a difference or whatnot. But I don't know what did the trick. Um, could have been just the tab. So that's that annoying tab right there. Um, I don't like this method of calibration. This thing is flimsy. It can bend. How do you know if you're getting a good calibration? I don't know. Um, so anyway, it's telling me to orient it like this, which I will. 
Um, and so basically that means C side has to be pointing up and now it's pointing up as you see. And um, is there a tab to get it in? Let's see. Center the calibration tool. Um, okay, so it's just centering it. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see if I'm good enough. Uh, I'm worthy enough um, to pass this calibration test. Okay, so that's about centered. It looks centered. Let's see. Let's give it a try and see if it works. And uh, it's going to calibrate the lasers, it says. Focus. Um, and I'm thinking the lasers are here and here. And that's the camera right there. And as you can see the laser turn on. Yep, I was right. Uh, so those are the lasers. And I just saw them turn on. I'm not sure if I caught that on film. But uh, it says calibration complete. So um, it says recommend calibrating your turner table and lasers either once a week or every 20 scans. Uh, understandable because this machine is fragile. Uh, if you bump it, if you hit it, if you move it, if you turn it upside down, if you play catch with it, uh, whatever you do, uh, right after you do that, uh, go ahead and calibrate it. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna get a bizarro um, scan job. Uh, and uh, I mean, unless you're into that type of stuff, um, go ahead, be my guest. Okay, so um, next we'll try to print some. Print some. Okay, it looks like the glasses frames did not work. Um, they were just too shiny. I'm going to have to play around with it a little bit more. So I found the easiest thing around um, the shop that I had around here. Um, just some tape. It's gonna put, I'm just going to put it right here. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the difficulty level. And, and I, I'm just going to put it medium level. And I'm about ready to get this done and over with. Um, again, nine minutes to scan. Laser turns on. Let's hope that this is very simple and easy. We'll come back, and once this is done, we'll go ahead and try to print it. And we are about to finish up with this piece of tape. Um, and it seems to have worked nicely here on the screen. Um, it still says I have five minutes remaining to finish this scan. Um, just not sure what's going on. I think um, well, something's going on here, which I'm not sure if it's a glitch in the system. Um, but the other laser is now going off. I'm not sure where that thing is hitting. Um, we'll wait it out and we'll see what goes on. Well, like I said, this is a learning experience for all of us, um, including myself. Um, I literally opened up the digitizer and set it up and have been trying to scan it. Um, and it's the first time I've used it. So um, let's hope this works. If it doesn't, I'm going to kick the crap out of this machine and send it back to MakeBot. Okay, so I've successfully completed a scan of this object here. Um, and so I was wondering why it was doing a, uh, a, a print at the bottom and at the top. I thought it was a malfunction, but what it is is that um, this is the bottom cut and this is the top cut. Um, and I don't know why they do this right now. I'm going to have to look into it, but I'm sure it's just to kind of you know, just to see the layers and and, and um, uh, see the top versus the bottom. Again, you're not going to get the exact tape roll. Um, I'm sure this is going to have to. This is going to have to become mobile. Um, these sensors here, um, where they can spin around the object and the object is suspended. That's the only way we'll get a true scan. So my first impression of the MakerBot digitizer, um, uh, very easy to set up, meaning uh, connecting the cables, very tiny, tiny amount of time to do that. Uh, you only got two cables, uh, power, and then connecting to the, uh, to the computer. 
Um, other than that, installing um, the software for MakerBot, very easy. Um, calibration, first step was very easy. Uh, I, I think it can be improved, uh, it should be improved, um, because it took me 30 to 30, uh, 35 minutes to uh, get it calibrated and I tried so many times. Um, tried scanning a few different times. I feel like uh, this is going to be a, a reoccurring issue uh, where you know everything I, I try to look around at the shop, whether it was my glasses, these Wolverine claws, um, this water bottle, um, everything had a reflective property to it. So I didn't know um, what to really use um, because mostly everything's made out of plastic. Uh, everything that we use or glass or whatnot. Um, so uh, to, to, to figure out what's compatible with this, what's practical to use with this, um, I'm going to have to figure that out. And then um, subsequently when I do, I'll, I'll scan something really cool and, and take a video of it and show it to the world uh, and, you know, using my YouTube channel. And we'll print it using this, uh, this bad boy here. Um, so first impression. Um, a uh, work in progress, I would say, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, the, 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 the first people in any industry, the, 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 the pioneers, they're always going to run into problems, uh, but that's how you learn. Um, and so, uh, good job MakerBot, uh, good job for a first attempt.